So after a few days, I'm gonna come to the cage and she will step up. Even if she doesn't love me, she will step up. Hello, my flighters and sniffers. My name is Marlene McCohen and welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new here, let me just fill you in on what it is that I do. I love parrots and I promote engage, not cage, which means that I try to educate people in general how to engage with their birds and not leave them in cages because that mentality is not okay. So that's what we try to do here. And I try to do that by teaching you how to work with your birds, but also by creating entertaining vlog videos so you guys could see how birds live free and fun in my house and in my daily life, which is really important to me. Today, we are going to talk about taming ringnecks. I have an Indian ringneck here. She's a female. Her name is Isis. Yes, Isis. For those of you who don't know how Isis came to me, you might be shocked right now. You're like, why do I have another bird? Just to fill you guys in who missed it. But you can check out the video. I'll put the link right here. I am helping out a fellow sniffer who recently came upon hard times and couldn't take care of her bird. So until she is able to do so, George and I went down there to take care of the bird. Isis is an extremely timid bird. I'm not exactly entirely sure how Isis was when she was in her pre previous owner's house, but she is definitely going through a bluffing period with me. So let me fill you in on what bluffing is. Bluffing phases are really common with ringnecks. Overnight, they can literally start hissing, biting, or just refusing human interaction. Now, usually once you've already bonded with your bird, you're kind of good to go, but it can happen sporadically. But most of the time, it happens when they're about four months old to a year. And a lot of the time, this is exactly Exactly when you bring your bird home. So obviously Isis is already about three years old from what I've been told. I know she had Isis a year and I don't know who had Isis previous to that. But Isis is definitely bluffing with me. So I'm gonna show you how to work with a very timid bird. Now the first thing I always do when I wanna test birds out is kind of approach the cage. And I don't know if you could see Isis here. Let me just show you a little bit closer. When I approach, Isis is not happy. Do you see? Isis wants to move away. Now, keep in mind, Isis hasn't been here long. She's scared, and this is like the behavior of a bird that is not pleased to have any human interaction. I just wanted to show you what that biting and that hissing looks like, okay? Before we go on so I can show you how I deal with it. I also wanted to show you that because I want you to understand that this is not a bird that is content with me yet and I'm kind of just showing you how to tame the bird. Literally, this bird is not happy right now. So throughout these videos, I'm gonna show you the process of how I turn this bird into a bird that's comfortable with me and bare minimum, this is very important guys, comfortable in their surroundings. So one thing I always wanna get through to you guys is that if your bird bites you, if you believe your bird doesn't like human interaction, if you don't feel like you have the skills to tame your bird, that does not mean you shouldn't include your bird. Your bird could be sitting on a perch nearby or on top of their cage, no matter how you feel about your bird and no matter how your bird feels about you. That's what not caged is. I'm here to show you what engaged is. So let's take a look at Isis. One thing is you want to not be scared the first time that you're gonna approach the bird. Prepare for the bird to bite you and try to not react. When you react with a parrot, it can one, make the bite worse, and two, make them feel very pleased that they got a reaction out of you and that you left them alone. So birds need to know that you're gonna approach strongly and firmly. So you see, Isis here is hanging upside down in the cage. She's really not in the mood for any kind of interaction. This is just evidence that this bird is not comfortable with me. Isis has only been here like a day. I'm gonna have to keep the camera a little bit where it is because I can't hold the camera and approach Isis. But I put my hands in and I don't worry about her biting me. Do you see how she went all over the cage? This bird is not into human interaction at all, okay? So my first goal is going to be to get the bird 
out of the cage. This is very important, okay? This is how I do things. You can, if you feel more comfortable, you can approach with apples and certain things that you might have heard that the bird likes, which by the way, if you ever get a bird from somebody else, a rescue or a bird that you are rehoming, then you wanna make sure you could get as much information from the previous owner as possible, specifically what the bird likes to eat, because if the bird is food motivated, that's going to go a long way. Way. Let me just use this pistachio as an example to show you how Isis reacts to food within the cage. This is not really going to help me at all. Isis is not into the idea of taking food from me from within her cage. She seems to be cage territorial, which a lot of birds are. This means that a lot of birds can bite you when you enter their cage, but they're much more comfortable outside of their cage. So the first thing I always like to do is to work with the bird outside of the cage. So how do I do that? Well, for one, you could just leave the door open and let the bird be. Let the bird have some space. Most of the time, that bird is gonna come out. If you're staring at the bird and the bird does not just come out on top of the cage, then um, you wanna walk away. Maybe let the bird be in the room by itself safely. Now, most of the time people don't give people flighted birds. You guys know that all my parrots are flighted. I believe in flighted parrots, but sometimes it can be very beneficial to have a clipped bird in this instance, because if Isis was to get free and these birds fly really well, even clipped, Isis is clipped, then this bird could go all over the place, panic and fly into windows. So, I mean, unless you're a very experienced bird owner, I wouldn't recommend that. So you guys know that in this instance, I would leave the cage open and and see what Isis does and see where Isis goes and walk away from the situation. Nine times out of 10, that bird is gonna be out somewhere. When the bird is out of the cage, it's a good idea to just hang around in that room. You don't need to approach the bird. You don't need to make the bird feel smothered. You just kind of need to let the bird know that your presence there is safe. You're not gonna come after the bird. You just want to be next to it safely. Think of it like this. You get captured and you're put in a cell. The capture was pretty traumatic for you. You're moving from one place to another. You don't know where you are. And then when you figure out where you are, you're behind this bar. And then this giant comes and it's like, oh my God, don't touch me. Oh my God, don't touch me. But if the giant lets you out of the cage and just opens the door and you're free to walk out and you see that the giant doesn't grab you and try to do something else with you, you'll start feeling more comfortable in the surroundings. Maybe the giant is just another gentle soul, right? That's what we have to be for these birds. Now you see she's kind of chilled out since I've been sitting here with the cage open just letting her hang out. So why are ring necks a lot different than conures and cockatoos and birds with powdery feathers? Now of course no matter what bird you're taming I feel like the process is very much the same but with ring necks they are not gonna succumb to head scratches and physical love like some birds do, cockatoos, conures, cocktails. That's what makes it a little bit more difficult. Literally, my birds are outside throwing tantrums because they can't get in, I'm not kidding you. So let's go over some ways to get your bird out of the cage. Way number one, you just leave the cage open and let the bird come out on its own. Now this can be tricky because it's like, what do you do with the bird once the bird comes out of the cage. That's where it's always good to have a play stand. Somewhere where your goal can be to transfer that bird to that stand where they can stand safely, feel comfortable, and just be in the room with you. With larger birds, the great thing about a play stand, so what we did with Merlin, is that you could kind of roll it over to the cage while the bird is standing on top of the cage and let him walk to it. So that's the benefit of that. Another option is a perch. You can use a stick to try try to get the bird out. But if the bird is extremely terrified of the stick and doesn't respond well to stepping up on the stick, I would abort the stick. So let's just give it a try with Isis. Okay, Isis isn't particularly comfortable with it, but I'm gonna keep going until she's forced to step on it. She kinda used it. Okay, okay, all right. She's almost, she's not terrified of it, so that's a good thing. Let me pull out this toy. We offer her this stick and she uses it to step forward. But she's more scared of my hands than the stick. So it's an option. Come on. 
Once you get her, it's okay, it's okay. Once you get the bird, this is very important, okay guys? I'm sitting here in a situation where I'm kind of forced with the lights and right next to the cage, but once you get the bird out of the cage, you must take the bird away from the cage. So Isis was walking around on the floor. I just kind of picked her up, let her loose when she's kind of on you. She's into my hair right now. She's angry, she's trying to make holes and stuff. She's not comfortable with me. At this point, I would get her out of this room, away from the cage, and into a neutral spot. See, she wants to go back to the cage. It's very hard to train a bird when their cage is in view or anything that they've been territorial over. So I'm gonna go downstairs now with Isis and show you how we're going to progress. And this isn't gonna happen in one day. Don't get me wrong, it can happen very quickly with some birds. You see how she's just sitting on the cage? That's something that any of your birds can do and at least they're not stuck in the cage. I don't believe anyone that says my bird wants to be in the cage. No bird wants to be in the cage it's just a lack of training and ability on your part birds don't have to be in the cage even if they don't love you I'm gonna take Isis downstairs I'm gonna pick her up like how I just did and then I'm going to show you what I do with her from there and since this process is gonna be a couple of days we're gonna monitor her improvement every single day and then you guys will see what changes I think this is the best way to show you how to tame a bird with my methods which is basically an inclusion method. I just believe in your bird becoming a part of your family. Now I'll show you as we leave here how I have a gangsta, Vinny, outside waiting for me. Don't forget to become part of the Vinny gang. And a cockatoo downstairs that is losing her mind because I'm not with her. Okay guys, so I'm about to take Isis with me and as soon as I opened the door, Vinny walked in and he's just walking around throwing a Vinny tantrum. Obviously, I'm not gonna take both birds at once. I'm gonna try to offer Isis an arm to step up on, okay? What's great about fabric is their nails kinda get caught in it, and when their nails get caught in it, they kinda really can't fly off. I'll come back and get Vinny later. She's gonna go on my head because she's really not familiar with me and not comfortable and she thinks that's going to be a better launching pad for her i'm just trying to show you how not comfortable this bird is so i had to put the camera down for a second but now i have isis on a bird stand and i'm just honestly going to leave her there and let her be included with me while i eat in the kitchen whatever i do just gonna let her see that I am not a threat to her. And you know what's gonna happen? After a few days, it's gonna be much more fun for her to be out and on a stand and free than it is for her to be in the cage. So after a few days, I'm gonna come to the cage and she will step up. Even if she doesn't love me, she will step up. Now while the bird is out on the stand, very important, you feed them treats, you find out what they like, you find out how food driven they are, and you start using that to your advantage. Come on, you don't want pasta? What She's angry that? right now. And that's another thing, just because you offered them something and they turned it down does not mean that they might not like it again later. So keep trying. They get in moods, they have feelings too, and they have their own ideas about themselves. So just keep that in mind. Okay, I'm talking to George right now about all the birds screaming because I was in the room. I'm like, why were you not watching them? He's like, you don't understand, they all wanted you. I'm like, did you hear Vinny? Vinny was out there yelling and then literally walked in as as soon as I opened the door. He was on the light and the next thing you know, he's like, I can't believe it. It's like, <laughs> it's like, uh, it's, not, it's like, uh, she did this and it's like, uh, I'm like, what? What What do you mean? What, what do you not believe? And I just wasn't sure what he was talking about. You can't believe I didn't let him in. He's like, we're supposed to make videos together and everyone does subtitles to me. yelling and screaming about all kinds of stuff too. I know he was. And meanwhile, Isis is right here. Just so you guys see, okay? It's really important that you guys understand the beauty of them just being out and about. I don't have to love them and squeeze them and kiss them. Well, I 
to do, but we'll get there. Okay guys, now here's another very important part of taming. This is obviously not Isis. This is Monty. He's a Senegal, but he's also a rescue that I had recently taken in a few months ago. So even though this isn't Isis, I want to show you something that's going to come up very important. So right now, Isis is down there, but this is something that I'll do with Isis in the morning, and I'll show you this. But basically, it's alone time. That's all it really is. So for example, I am now going in here and I'm probably going to shower or take off my makeup so I invite a bird to come with me truth be told usually all of my birds come with me but I'm gonna do something specific in here I'm just gonna take off my makeup so I've invited Monty to hang out with me because he's been acting out now he's a lot farther along in taming and bonding with me than Isis is Isis is like beginning stages but I still just want to show you this part of the process because I think it's very important just to include your birds all the the time and we will get back to Isis I just want to show you where you will be hopefully in the bonding process with your bird so Monty you see he's a little tense still the thing with Monty is that he feels sometimes left out and alone and you got to have a sense about that with your bird especially if you have multiple birds you're gonna have to be aware of who's feeling what at the moment and I just felt like Monty needed some alone time you could tell by he's getting a little like he's not biting hard or anything but he's just getting a little bit prone to aggression and what made me bring him up here was that he jumped down off his cage and tried to shuffle himself over towards me even though he's kind of like a grumpy old man still like I know it's in his heart to be with me and that develops much more rapidly when I have some time to spend alone with him so try to never have more birds than you can handle than you can give the alone time that they need from you if you have more than one bird person in your house that is amazing because you could divide up the love if you understand what I'm saying so for example, Rocky's never expecting any love from me, especially not when George is around. So that kind of really just helps balance out the situation, especially since all the rest of my birds I can kind of hang out with at the same time. And what I'm gonna do now is probably take my makeup off, get ready to watch a movie with the rest of the birds, just sit down and chill. While I do this, George is going to be getting them ready for bed. And then we'll go down and include them some more, except for Jersey, because it's really important for Jersey to get like solid, solid, like for her to stick to her bedtime with like her anxiety issues for those of you who don't know that's my umbrella cockatoo and I want to show you guys something else since he's kind of grumpy right now if I approach him he may or may not step up he's actually being pretty nice he's probably open to some head scratches yeah but he has been stick trained since before I got him so I could give him a little love and I can try to pick him up that worked out quite fine but if it wouldn't have then what I could do is go back to using the perch which he always steps on so that's kind of the benefit of training with a little perch but obviously he's a sweet enough bird that you don't have to do that all the time but if you're new to the bird and you find the bird to be a little bit unpredictable and you don't feel confident that you won't pull away if he bites and it's a really good idea to always have a little stick on hand if your bird's terrified of it that's a whole different story yeah you're a good bird. And then I just put them in places like I have a Monty right there. He's on the top. It's always a good idea to have some makeshift perches and areas that your bird can stand and hang out with you when you are trying to include them. They don't always have to be on a play stand or a cage. Just be creative. I will also include him up there on the shower. Always know that there's always a place for them. That's the most important thing. And we're gonna do that with Isis and follow-up. So I think we're gonna end this video for today. And then tomorrow I'm gonna do some follow-ups with you guys on Isis and show you the process progress and we're gonna check how Isis comes out of the cage tomorrow see if there's been any improvement you saw how she was kind of going all over the cage today she wasn't too happy but after being out all day today she might still be difficult I would say day three is gonna be the best day for her especially if I don't take her out right in the morning so for example if she's spent a lot of days learning how great it is to be out she has food out and about that she can jump to and reach to there's a lot of bowls on the stand and then 
then let's say on the third day, you don't pull her out in the morning right away. She has to kind of wait. She might be anxious to get out and she might be anxious to step up on me, which could be <laughs> really beneficial to me. Okay guys, good night. Don't forget to check out all my links in the description box. If you want a Vinnie Gang shirt, the link is below. If you guys want early access to my videos, check out my Patreon. I love you guys so much. Don't forget to let me know what your favorite part of this video is. If you learned anything new and how you tame your birds. Bye.